Uniswap is the biggest dApp on any blockchain. Today we're going to be going over how to build your very own DEX just like Uniswap in only one smart contract. And we're going to be deploying this on Linea, the new ZKVM Layer 2 launched by Consensus that's been getting a bunch of DeFi traffic. Let's get into it. So let's create our project. And I'm going to create a new contract for our DEX. A DEX like Uniswap has four main functions. We have the ability to create pools, we have the ability to add liquidity, we have the ability to remove liquidity, and of course we have to be able to perform token swaps. The real Uniswap is a bit more complex. It has quite a few more smart contracts for gas optimization reasons, additional functionality, and handling a ton of edge cases that we're not going to handle for this video. Now that we have our core functions outlined, we have to figure out what data structure are we going to use. The simplest way to handle this is by having a mapping to a pool struct. We can keep track of token balances and LP balances using this struct. But what should the key for this mapping be? Well, we can get a unique identifier by just appending the two token addresses together. So we just created a struct that keeps track of any pool that gets created. We have a mapping from token addresses to the balance of the token, another mapping that keeps track of LPs and their LP token balance, as well as a total LP tokens uint. Now we can get started on our create pool. There's three main things our create pool function has to do. Number one, it has to make sure that all the token values and amounts are correct and valid. Next, the user has to actually deposit the tokens into the contract. And we have to initialize the pool. So what do we want to check for? Well, one thing I can think of is that we want to make sure that these are actually valid token addresses and that they're not the same. And we're actually going to want to reuse these requires for our other function. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull this out into a modifier. And I can add this modifier now to the function signature so that it runs before we call this function. Another thing we need to do is make sure that this DEX contract has the ability to actually transfer these tokens for the user. And so this is the famous allowance button you may have seen on Uniswap or other DEXs where we are actually transferring these tokens on the user's behalf. So we have to make sure that we have permissions to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and add another modifier to make sure we have the appropriate permissions. Great, so we have this modifier, but we need to actually import this ERC20 interface so that we can utilize these contract function. I'm gonna ask the AI to import it for us. Now that we've added some basic checks, it's time to actually create the pool. But before we can create the pool, we need to make sure that the pool doesn't already exist yet. So let's add a helper function that gets the pool with its associated token addresses. And we can check whether it's a null address and we can create the pool or if there already is values here. What this get pool function is doing is first creating the key for us to access the pool. So we're just concatenating the two token addresses and using the lesser value first so that we always get the same key. And then we're just returning the pool associated with this key. So this should be unique for every token pair. So if the token balance for either token is not zero, then the pool already exists. And so we don't want this user to be able to create a new pool with this token pair. Now that we've finished these basic checks, let's actually transfer the tokens from the user to the contract. We use the AI to generate this contract function for us. It's kind of just a boilerplate calling transfer from on, on two different contracts. Finally, we're going to initialize the pool. To keep track of LP balances, what Uniswap and other DEXs do is that they issue tokens to all the LPs. The tokens represent the ownership of the pool that this, this LP has. The benefit of this is that LPs have a token they can use to redeem their earnings from the, the pool, or they can actually sell this token to someone else. 
for simplicity, we're not going to use an actual ERC-20 token. We're just going to represent this as a balance that they have in this contract. We can set this initial LP value to really whatever we want. I'm just going to use 10,000 for simplicity. We're going to add one more modifier on this create pool function, which is the re guard from Open Zeppelin. As the modifier's name suggests, it prevents re by allowing you to only call this function once. And we use the keyword non re to use this function. So now let's move on to add liquidity. We can use these same three modifiers. And we're actually going to add one more modifier, which is to make sure that the pool actually does exist, which is the opposite of what we wanted before. I can't add liquidity to a pool that doesn't exist. The main challenge with the add liquidity function is that we need to make sure that it's being added in the correct ratio. We can maintain this ratio by first getting the spot price of token A, and then we can multiply that spot price by the amount of token A that we're adding in right now and ensure that that's actually equivalent to the amount of token B that we're adding in. This should work because the current spot price is just the current reserves of token B over the current reserve of token A. If we multiply that by the new reserve of token A, we should get the value which is the new amount of token B if they're being added the correct ratio. Let's write our get spot price helper so we can see how this actually works. The purpose of the get spot price function is to return the price of token A in terms of token B. The way that we do that is by just taking the reserves of the two pools. So we can say the amount of token B over the amount of token A remaining in the pool is the price of token A. There's one caveat here, which is that Solidity doesn't support floating point math. So if there's more of token A than token B, for example, if there's 50 of token B and 100 of token A, if I were to just simply divide token B by token A, it would actually return zero because 50 over 100 in Solidity land returns zero because there's no, there's no such thing as a floating point. We'll have to use fixed point math, which means we have to multiply supply of token B times a number which will make sure that we're above zero when we do this division. And we're going to multiply by the number of decimals in each of these tokens, which is going to be 18. This gives us much more precision when we're making these division operations. So even if token B supply is one and token A supply is much, much bigger, like 1 billion, since we're multiplying by this huge number, we have a lot of precision and we know that this number won't be rounded to zero. Now that we know that tokens are being added at the current liquidity, we can transfer the tokens into the contract. Now that the contract has the tokens from the liquidity provider, we're going to update the state of the pool. So what we're doing here is updating the token balances of token A and token B with the corresponding amount A and amount B. This new tokens line is here because we need to give the new liquidity provider ownership of this liquidity pool. So we need to figure out how many LP tokens to give them. And what we're, how we're doing that is by determining the ratio of how much they're adding, amount A, with the current balance of, of token A, and then multiplying that by the initial LP balance. So if amount A is 200 and current A balance is 100, they'll get two times the initial LP balance of the tokens. So they'll now own two thirds of the pool. So this just makes sure that we're giving the liquidity provider their appropriate equity in this pool. And then we're just updating the total LP tokens with this new tokens amount, as well as the balance for this specific liquidity provider. Now let's move on to remove liquidity. We can pull all of these same modifiers that we've been using and use the same ones for remove liquidity. We don't need has balance and allowance because there's no amount that we're depositing. If I was using Uniswap, I'd be able to sell off part of my ownership in his liquidity pool. So if I had 100 LP tokens, I could sell off 75, for example, and keep 25. For simplicity, we're just going to have this remove liquidity cash out all of the liquidity providers' tokens. And so they'll get their balance will be reset to zero, and they will get all of the earnings percentage of the pool that they've earned. 
So first we have to make sure that this user actually has some liquidity to withdraw. Now that we know this LP does in fact have a balance on this contract, we have to figure out how much of token B and token A should we send to this LP. The way we're going to do this is by figuring out what is the ownership stake of this liquidity provider of the entire pool. So we can take their LP balance divided by the pool's entire balance, and we can multiply that by the amount of token A and token B. So the end result is that if I own 10% of the pool, we'll multiply the token A balance by 1 over 10 and the token B balance by 1 over 10. And that's what we'll send back to me as a liquidity provider. Finally, let's move on to our swap function, which is probably the most exciting. So let's pull the same modifiers we had for remove liquidity. To implement the swap function, we need to figure out how many output tokens we need to return for a given amount of input tokens. Luckily, there's a formula we can use to derive this. So this is the equation we're going to use to determine that. Delta Y is the, is the amount of output tokens of token Y that we're returning. Y is the, the supply of this token. R represents a fee that the, the LP pool is taking. And so in Uniswap, this is 0.3%. So we're going to use the same fee. Delta X is how many input tokens we're putting in. So this is the, the amount of our token that we're sending into the pool. X is the supply of this token that we're sending in. And then again, R times delta X is the, the same thing as, as the numerator. The main purpose of this swap function is to calculate the output number of tokens we need to give the user for however many input tokens they gave. So the way we do that is by implementing this delta y equation that we have. So first we're taking the fee, which is 30 basis points, which is 0.3%, which is the same as Uniswap. And then we're multiplying this by delta x, which is the amount of input tokens that we're putting in. Then we calculate the output tokens by multiplying the pool balance of the token that we're swapping to times this r delta x value divided by the pool balance of the token that we're depositing plus r delta x. Then we're simply going to update the pools and send some tokens around. Now that our contract's done, let's deploy it to Linea so we can test it out. Great, so now that we've deployed our contract, we can try creating a pool and swapping. We see here though, for creating a pool, we're gonna need two tokens. So I actually created this token here called SimpleCoin. I use the AI to generate it, and it just mints the supply to the deployer, and then we can mint more later if we need it. I did the same exact thing here with another token. It's literally the exact same code, I just named it a different token. So we're gonna deploy both of these that we have tokens to create a pool with. So now that we've deployed all of these, I'm going to create a pool. The first thing we need to do is approve the DEX to spend these tokens, and then we can create the pool. So I'm going to come over here to the approve function, paste in the contract address, and the value. And it's done, so let's approve the other one. Now that we've approved both of these, we can actually create the pool. I'm going to need these two contract addresses, and then we can create it. Amazing, so the pool is created. 
I want to test out the other functions of our contract, but we probably want to be a bit more rigorous and have formal test cases. So let's go ahead and write a test. So here's a test I wrote for the contract. We're importing the three main contracts that we created, the two tokens, as well as the DEX. To set up, we're initializing some addresses and minting tokens to them so that they can create pools and swap. And here's the actual test. First, we're starting by simulating creating a pool. And so we're creating the pool here and then making sure that the token balances and the LP balances are correctly set. Next, we're adding liquidity. Here, we're using one of the LPs to deposit liquidity for this token pair. We have this line here to make sure that the invariant is being held up. So I can't just deposit two tokens at any arbitrary price. And then we're depositing at the correct value and ensuring that the pools are correct. Next, it's time to make a trade. So we have a swapper address that's swapping a thousand of the tokens. So we're making sure that the pool gets updated when we do the swap and their balance is correct. This last line is the amount of tokens that we expect the swapper to have. We can determine this number by plugging in the pool balances into the delta y equation we had for the swap function so that we know exactly what we're getting out. Remember, since there's no floating point solidity, most of this number is actually to represent a decimal, which means a fraction of a token rather than a whole token. Finally, at the end, we're removing liquidity. So we're making sure that the liquidity provider gets the appropriate amount of token A and token B when they're withdrawing. You can use this test case as a template for your own future test cases. If you want to test out doing more swaps, test out adding liquidity, removing liquidity, really any edge case you want to think of. And that's about it for this video. We went over how to build the decks in one contract, how to create sample tokens so that you can create a pool and test out swaps, and how to create a test to make sure that all of the functions that we built were actually doing the correct thing. In the next video, I'm going to be showing how to build this into a full DAP, which means connecting this to a front end and making it feel like Uniswap.